Pablo, so I'm a hacker, but um, <laughs> I'm unarmed. I promise today I'm not doing anything. I'm stealing no passwords, breaking into nothing. Um, I'm just going to talk to you about some of the projects we're working on. So I work at a lab called Intellectual Ventures, where uh, essentially what we're trying to do is invest in invention. We're trying to find ways to make invention a legitimate career choice that you can put on your business card and your mother will still be proud of you. Probably, even in Israel, you don't have people with business cards that say inventor. So we're trying to find ways to fix that. And um, uh, we have some interesting projects related to that. This is our lab. We have every tool in the world uh, under one roof. This is mostly machine shop here. And we have a high energy laser lab, uh, clusters of thousands of computers that we use for computational modeling. And this is a culinary sciences lab where we are working on the science of cooking. Um, unlike your kitchen, this one has a drill press and a bandsaw and a homogenizer and uh, uh, what else is there? Rotary evaporator, quarter million dollar pharmaceutical freeze dryer, all things we hope you'll have in your kitchen someday. <laughs> um, and then the, that team actually puts out a lot of these elaborate photos of cool cooking techniques. Um, actually, one of the fun things we've been doing is cutting kitchen tools in half in the machine shop and then doing these cross-sectional photos to show you how, how things cook. Um, anyway, there's science here. So this is actually showing like the process of how meat cooks um, so that chefs can understand instead of old wives' tales, understand the actual process. Uh, I had a couple of points. Um, one of them is this. I, you know, where I come from, I'm known as a hacker. The reason for that is that hackers have the right mindset for discovering what's possible, right? Hackers have an ability to interact with the world in a different way and figure out what's possible, what we can do next, where we can take technologies, how we can infuse them into our lives. And so hackers are the people I want to hire in the lab to figure out what we can do. Um, here's one of the problems we work on in the lab, malaria. That mosquito is carrying a uh, uh, parasite that kills about a million people a year, half of which are kids, mostly in Africa. This is a protocol diagram for malaria. So what hackers do is take a protocol like this and look at every point along the protocol and try and figure out how do we attack that? How do we make it do something different than what it was trying to do? What happens if we inject a little one or a zero right there where <laughs> where the parasite is living in your bloodstream. So the way we used to solve malaria um, here, I don't know about, you know, here and mostly in um, the US is DDT. We spray chemicals which kill everything, right? Um, that works, but it's politically unpopular. Um, so we're looking for other ways. And one of the ways that we do that is we explore that in software. This is a computational model, a Monte Carlo simulation of uh, Madagascar where we simulate basically every pixel of Madagascar, right? But instead of the color, we're putting climate data, rainfall, the travel of humans, everything that affects the spread of malaria. And we can model that over the course of years and see what happens if we plot an eradication campaign where we start to go in and apply some new techniques to getting rid of malaria once and for all. I think we can get rid of malaria uh, entirely in our lifetime. A lot of people are working on it. We have the political will to do it. And we mostly have a lot of the technologies, but here we can test them in software before we ever do anything in the real world. So our way of killing malaria in part is to find the mosquitoes that carry it and shoot them down with laser beams. <laughs> so um, in our lab, we invented this thing and no one believed it was possible because it sounds ridiculous. Um, and so we built it. So we built a machine that finds mosquitoes flying around. Uh, the main idea of how you would uh, deploy this as perimeter security. We put these things on fence posts around a building or a village. It finds all the mosquitoes flying in and, um, lets, uh, and shoots them down, but lets humans and the harmless bees and butterflies come in and do their thing. You might want this for your backyard. I don't know. <laughs> it turns out that we invented this for humanitarian reasons, but it also is possible to use it for um, protecting crops. And, and we have what I'd call an organic photonic pesticide. Right. Uh, um, yeah, thank you. So uh, the way this thing works, interestingly, is um, we find things that are moving around. 
with a CMOS sensor, like from a webcam. We aim a laser at them and sample their wing beat frequency. From that, I can figure out this is a bug, it's a mosquito, it's Anopheles stephensi, it's female, and then I fire a lethal laser at it to shoot it down. All the parts in this thing, I know it sounds ridiculous, all the parts in this thing are consumer electronics, right? These things follow Moore's law. So we use the laser from a Blu-ray burner, the CCD from a digital camera, laser galvos from a laser printer. I mean, all this stuff, you can plot a curve and the price goes down with economies of scale, right? So for fun, I'll show you some of the footage we've taken in the lab of us killing mosquitoes with lasers. Uh, we have one of the most badass high-speed video cameras in the world, so I can shoot HD at 7,000 frames a second. So this is uh, what mosquitoes look like when they're flying. This is a, a sort of an experiment where we can show the fluid dynamics around how mosquitoes fly. We're looking at his wings here. They're neutrally buoyant particles in the air that we've lit up, and we're watching them to see how the mosquito flies. We want to know our enemies so that we can find more effective ways to get rid of them. Shoot down sequence. <laughs> so that guy just got lit up by a UV laser, which uh, damaged his wing, and he's not going to fly anymore. <laughs> no one seems to mind. <laughs> Normally, you kill bugs in the lab. Uh, okay, this guy, we kind of, you know, shot him with a little too much energy, and his wing just vaporized. <laughs> Again, no one's coming to the rescue of mosquitoes. Turns out they don't represent more than 5% of anyone's food supply. So if we accidentally kill all the mosquitoes, no one's actually going to care. And then just for fun, um, some gratuitous uh, overkill. OK. We're trying to figure out exactly how much laser energy is necessary to kill a mosquito, keep it from reproducing. Haven't actually honed in on the right number yet. OK. So another problem we work on is what to do about hurricanes. These things are fueled by heat radiating off the surface of the ocean. So our idea is, hey, let's just cool off the surface of the ocean. That's a ridiculous notion because of the amount of energy it would take. But everywhere you've got hot water on top, you have cold water below. So this invention is a really simple, it's a giant tube. You stick it in the ocean. Waves, which are plenty, push hot water into the top. That creates a pump. The water goes down and mixes up with cold water below. If you put enough of these in the ocean, we think, you could bring the surface temperature down and actually suppress hurricanes, change Cat 5 hurricanes to Cat 4s, right? Now, that's huge. It'd probably be a bigger project than building the China Wall, but Another big problem, global warming. Maybe we can do something about that. This idea is a way to reverse some of the effects of global warming by putting uh, particulate into the stratosphere. This is sulfur dioxide. What we would do is put, um, put that up about 100,000 feet up. And the idea there is to reflect a little bit of sunlight before it gets into the atmosphere and heats up greenhouse gases, right? So. This is a really simple idea. You put a hose to the sky hanging off of helium balloons. That's it. So this is basically one two-inch garden hose to the sky in the northern hemisphere. We think that's enough that it could reverse uh, global warming, bring Arctic ice levels back to pre-industrial levels. Again, in the lab, we're just looking at some of the big problems that humans have, trying to figure out what we can do about them. What I think is interesting about this is every time we've talked about geoengineering ideas in the past, where humans would try to affect the climate or the environment, they're vastly expensive, way too expensive to take seriously. This thing we think would cost like tens of millions of dollars, not billions. You almost can't afford not to do it. The last thing I'll talk about today, these stainless steel casks contain depleted uranium from the enrichment process we use to fuel nuclear reactors today, right? We don't have a plan for what to do with that stuff. We stockpile it. This is a stockpile in Kentucky of 700,000 metric tons of depleted uranium we don't have a plan for. It's radioactive material. It's nuclear waste. So our idea is take that stuff and power our reactors with it. What we do today is we enrich fuel 
we get about 3% of the energy out of it once we get it into reactors to burn, right? The rest of that energy is sitting on the ground in these casks. So the way our reactor works is we take that waste, we put it in our reactor, there's no moving parts, we light it up at one end like a candle, it burns from one end to the other over the course of, in this design, 60 years. You can see the process here, it's called the traveling wave reactor. What's happening is um, we create a, a leading wave that actually causes the fuel to get enriched right inside of the reactor. Here's an, a diagram of it. We light it up at one end with some plutonium or some other fissionable material. That creates a wave that enriches the fuel and then it burns inside of the reactor with a second wave over the course of here 60 years. And the idea is that you could power with that stockpile that I showed you all of the power needs for the entire planet for a couple hundred years, right? With just the one stockpile that we have sitting there. So those are projects we're working on. Um, if you have questions about invention or, or our work, uh, feel free to check out the website or come see me or email me. So um, I started writing a little bit about these projects on our, uh, on our website so you can see what we're up to. So thanks. Pablos. 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 I heard a rumor that your real passion is salsa. Uh, yeah, I'm a salsa dancer, mildly obsessed. Okay, <laughs> mildly obsessed. All right, we're going to see if you can take that kind of ingenuity and uh, stage a little dance for us. Now? <laughs> we haven't prepared. No, no, I'm definitely not going to do it, but... Oh, <laughs> even better. <laughs> okay, so hold you've on. got a song? What's your name? Show us what you can do. Marina, I'm Pablo's. Okay. Que yo vuelvo 